Hi, my name is Craig Verriccio, and this is my presentation on content-based image retrieval as part of our final project for digital image processing, spring 2015. Here's a basic outline of what we're going to discuss, a description of the problem, and some of the concepts involved and some of the issues that arose in the process. Then we'll take a look at the code. Uh, then the graphical user interface and the execution workflow, followed by conclusions and future plans for improvement. Now, content-based image retrieval, as you all know by now, is the problem of matching an image with similar images based on the content of the image rather than some additional information or metadata. It's typically done by extracting a feature vector for each image and then comparing each of the individual features. In this case, uh, our single feature is the normalized histogram for each image. Then once we have the normalized histogram, we're going to compare those features uh, using a few different distance measurements. In this case, I implemented the chi-square distance, histogram intersection, and the kolbach liebler divergence. Uh, some of the steps in the process of loading the image or of uh, processing the images include loading the images. Uh, one of the issues that we had to address with that was recursively loading the images. Uh, we also had to think about filtering out files that were not acceptable images that might be in the directories. Uh, we had to create the HSV histograms, which involved conversion of RGB values to HSV and conversion of the 3D histogram into a 1D histogram. Then there was a classification process. And in that process, we had to be able to handle multiple uh, arbitrarily defined measures and then we had to compare the comparison image to an entire database of over a thousand other images. So we needed to be able to do that in a reasonable period of time. And then this was all surrounded by a GUI. Uh, some of the things that I had to deal with, uh, a particular tricky one, was making sure to keep the display refreshed at all time as the user interacted with it and as the data underneath updated. And then there was also an issue of data persistence so that the various components of the GUI could communicate with each other and maintain a, a global state. The code structure, in the end, I only used a single package, which I called CBIR. Uh, I actually did not end up importing packages from previous projects or from the class source repository, although I did use a couple of classes that I had used in previous projects, including color tuple and classifier from project nine. Uh, each of the classes here were color tuple, image, image database, measure, classifier, and image GUI. And I'll give you a breakdown of what each of those involved. Color tuple represented an individual pixel. It basically exists because it has the methods for converting RGB values into components and vice versa. And now it also included the methods for converting RGB values into HSV or HSB values. Image. This was the primary object that represented an individual image. It actually stores the data for the image itself, the buffered image object. It stores the metadata on the image, in this case primarily just consisting of the file name uh, or the name of the image that was loaded. And it stores, um, it calculates and stores the histogram values for the image as each image is loaded. Image database, that's our image repository that we had. It uh, references all of the loaded images uh, it stores the file metadata for how to find those images again. And it uh, included the methods for recursively loading the images from a root file directory. 
within the classifier, there is a, a small class that's used called measure. Measure is actually, in this case, just an interface. It, it uh, the measures themselves were dynamically generated anonymous implementations of measure. Uh, this was done so that the measures could be arbitrarily defined on the fly, uh, quickly redefined, and that we could add new measures with no overhead. The classifier itself includes the dictionary of all of the instantiated measures for this particular instance. It also includes the comparison methods for comparing a candidate image against the entire database. And then the GUI. Uh, Swing-based, it uh, utilized the swing elements jcombo box, jbutton, jpanel, and jfile chooser. Uh, and then it also uses what are considered beans in this context, but that's really just final objects that exist at the jframe level, which allows each of the individual components to uh, communicate with each other. The objects that we had to persist were the classifier, the image database, and then the comparison image that was loaded. Here's a, a quick look at the taxonomy of how this all works. GUI is what executes first. It then uh, creates a classifier and comparison image object. Within the classifier is contained the entire image database and all of the measures, and then the image database contains all the uh, images in the catalog and each of the measures. Here's a look at the interface. Uh, pretty uh, basic to start, but it includes each of the things uh, requested or required to do the project, including uh, buttons to load the the comparison image and the catalog images and select the similarity measure and the images to return. We'll take a more in-depth look at this when we actually execute a live demo of the program at the end of this presentation. Uh, so part of the process that you're going to see uh, involves um, loading the, the catalog and, and loading the individual images. Both of these involve a file load process. In this case, I ended up utilizing JFile Chooser, which gave us a nice familiar interface for selecting the file. Uh, I had to make some adjustments to default to the current project directory, um, and I had to make the catalog load process be able to accept an individual file or an entire directory, whereas the comparison image load only accepts individual files. And then in both cases, all files are filtered down to only the acceptable image formats. Now, the image database build process. So as I've said, I, have, I made the catalog creation process, the, the image database load process, part of the GUI. So it happens on the fly as you are running the program. So once you've selected your root folder through the GUI, uh, then it goes in and it recursively uh, traverses the file um, structure and, and selects all image files that it finds anywhere in the directory structure there. The histogram analysis is done on each of those images automatically during the load. Uh, and then it gives you feedback about the files that have been loaded. So here is just a look at the final result of all of this when the program has been executed. Uh, this, is, this is after we've selected the individual image and the catalog images and executed the process and we've returned the results. So we'll take a look at all of that in more detail in just a second. So before we do that though, some uh, some conclusions that uh, came out of this project. Uh, the process was surprisingly fast and effective. As you'll see, uh, it can be done on the fly with a large number of images. And, and the images returned are uh, 
are pretty reasonable. All of the methods implemented were comparable. They returned similar results, although the performance of the callback seems worse than the other two. Matches are only based on color similarity, as you would expect, since this is since our only feature is the HSV histogram. Uh, the matches are only based on color similarity, and so that occasionally produces some weird results. We might see some of those when we execute it. So you'll see things come up that have very similar colors, but uh, otherwise seem totally dissimilar. So plans for improvement. Well, the, the biggest way to improve upon the uh, some of the weird matches would be by implementing other uh, features that are not based on color histograms. Uh, such as some of the ones we, we've done in previous projects. Also, once we've implemented multiple features, rather than just selecting an, a, a single metric or a single feature, we could compare across multiple metrics and multiple features and aggregate those results. Uh, and then we, I, I'd like to look into enlarging the image database, uh, possibly by using a web crawling or web scraping technique to develop a large database quickly through Google Images or another source. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the live program. Here we are in project final. Let's go ahead and run that project. And as you can see, here's the interface that we saw in the presentation. So the first step that we're going to want to do is to load the catalog. So we go here, click on load catalog images. And that's going to pop up a file chooser. Uh, in this case, let's go into this images folder here. As you can see, there's several uh, files in the images folder. Then there's a subdirectory of CBIR images. There's even a zip file in here. That's OK. It'll deal with all of that. And we'll go ahead and hit open. And now this, this is building the entire catalog right now. So uh, it takes a few seconds, although it is surprisingly quick. Probably takes about five seconds to load all 1,000 images and process their histograms. And there we go. You see 1,020 files loaded. That part of the process is complete. Let me go over here. We select the file that we're going to compare. Let's select uh, one of the images from that folder. This will be one of the images that I uh, created of my of my town. Uh, this let's pick this creek images. Open. Okay. And as you can see, it's very small here, but there's a nice image of a of a local creek here. Let's uh, go ahead and stick with chi squared and images return. Let's change that to six images, and then we'll click find matches, and then in, it. It returns immediately. As you can see, obviously the top match for itself, or the top match is itself. Um, and then we see several other images that were returned. Interestingly, this image down here is another image of the same creek, so that's a very good match. These others are obviously different, but as you take a look at them, you can see that they share a very similar uh, color characteristics, uh, especially as far as the trees are concerned with the other image. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do another example here. We'll select, um, let's see, select, uh, this is a, just a local restaurant. And as you can see, it's a very different image. It's uh, a picture of the sidewalk. It's um, mostly white compared to the other one. Uh, let's go ahead and select a different similarity measure. Do histogram intersection. We'll change the number of images to nine. Hit find matches. And as you can see, this has some interesting results here. Um, but uh, if you look at them uh, in general, you'll see that you see very similar uh, color patterns to the original image. Uh, actually, you see a lot of other similarities also, but I think we know that the color is what's dominating the selection here. And let's go ahead and, and select the final measure here. We'll rerun it. See, actually we got got very different results, but but also still results that are that are similar in the same way. 
that that all share uh, similar uh, structural characteristics to the original image. And that's basically it. That concludes my presentation on uh, content-based image retrieval. Thanks for your time.